Welcome. In this video, we will do a second example for the variational principle. This time we will solve, or we will find rather, the ground state energy or an approximation for it for the delta potential. Now the delta potential we have seen before, right? It's this thing right here. So it's the kinetic part and then the delta potential, which is going to be a delta well. It's going to be minus alpha and the delta function, of course. And we are going to use the for the trial function the same Gaussian function that we used previously. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So just as a reminder, what does the variational principle tell us? The variational principle tells us that we can always for sure find an overestimate of the ground state energy if we take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, but with respect to our trial function. So if we take this <coughs> expectation value, it's always, 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 always going to be larger or equal, at, at the bare minimum equal or larger than the ground state energy, but it's never going to be lower. Okay, so that's what the variational principle tells us. And that's why we, depending on the problem, later on we might have to minimize our result to find the smallest possible value to get as close as possible to the actual value. And this allows us to not have to actually solve the Schrodinger equation, which is very, very useful. Okay, so let's begin. So first of all, we have to normalize this wave function. Now, uh, we did this in the previous video, but I'll do it uh, in case you didn't watch it. If you did, you can just skip ahead to the next section. I'm going to time mark it in the description. Okay, so to normalize this, one is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of a squared e to the minus 2bx squared dx. Okay, nothing new here. However, this is very important. This is the integral of e to the minus 2bx squared. This is simply a constant. This integral is called a Gaussian integral and it comes up very, very often in quantum mechanics and in statistics in general. So it is very important that you know how to solve it. So this integral is the square root of pi over whatever is accompanying the minus x squared. Don't put the minus sign in here. So this would be 2b. Okay, you can't really solve this integral by any traditional methods. This one is calculated numerically and you just use the value, right? You, it's not like you there's any trick. If you don't have numerical methods or something, you can't evaluate it. So you have to re remember that value. Very, very important. So from this result, we see that a squared is 2b over pi to the one half. And of course, a is going to be this to the one fourth. Okay, now let's use this and let's find the expectation value for the Hamiltonian, right, which is going to be the energy. So this will be on one hand, the part for the kinetic part, and also the part for the potential. Since you know, the integrals are going to be a bit nasty, it is good to just go with one at a time, right? There's no need to go for for both at the same time, you could, but uh, there's more room for error if you do. So I'm going to go first for the kinetic term and then later I'm going to do the other one. So the kinetic term is going to be exactly the same as the one we saw in the previous video. Um, but I'm going to do it again just in case. So it's going to be minus h bar squared over 2m. Okay, this is looking terrible. There we go. Um, integral from minus infinity to infinity of, then we get one time the wave function, right, um, conjugate, but well, it is real, so it doesn't matter. And then d squared, dx squared of our wave function, dx. So what is this second derivative? So let's calculate it real quick. I'm gonna, you know, make a quick note here. So d squared, dx squared of psi. This would be the second derivative of a, right? and then e to the minus just bx, right? We haven't gotten to the two yet. It isn't squared, that's what I mean. We have to multiply it by this part, that's what I mean. So we just have to derive this. There's nothing new here. So deriving once, we get minus 2bx e to the minus bx squared. And now we have to derive again. So going to be minus a times 2b. And then we get two terms. One is this x, 
So we use product rule. So for the first one, we simply get e to the minus bx squared. And for the other one, we get minus 2bx again. So we get minus 2bx squared, right? There, there was already uh, an x, so it, it gets squared. So e to the minus bx. All right. So let's plug it into our integral. So that would be the expectation value for the kinetic energy will be minus h bar squared over 2m. Now that we plug this in, we are going to get a squared, which we can pull out. Then we get this minus 2b, minus 2b, which we can also pull out. Then minus infinity to infinity of e. Now let's multiply through. So we get this part right here. So e to the minus 2b x squared. And then this part, minus 2b x squared e to the minus 2b x squared dx. Okay, so we got two integrals. Um, the first one is just your normal Gaussian integral. There's literally nothing new there. So let's uh, simplify it here a little bit. So the twos cancel out, the minus signs cancel out. So we get h bar squared a squared b over m. <coughs> and then we have the Gaussian integral. So that's simply square root of pi over 2b, nothing new. And then we have this other part. So we get minus 2b times the integral of minus infinity to infinity of x squared e to the minus 2b x squared dx. This is another incredibly, incredibly important integral that you have to know how to solve because it will come up very, very often. So how do we solve this? Well, let's just call it i and solve it down here. So the way to do this is to just to make it more clear, I will call whatever is accompanying x, I will call it beta. So beta is going to be 2b. So the integral is going to be minus infinity to infinity of x squared e to the minus beta x squared dx. So if beta was some sort of a variable and we and we had like e to the minus beta x squared, and we derive this with respect to beta, we would get minus beta e to the minus beta x squared times, of course, x squared. Sorry, the beta here. Sorry, the beta, of course, doesn't come down. What comes down is the x squared. Right? That was a mistake. Sorry about that. So we get the x squared down here, which is exactly what we have here. So if you think of beta as a variable, we're just going to fix its value later. But we can actually re rewrite this whole thing as the derivative with respect to beta, which we can, of course, pull out of the integral since the integral is only with respect to x and not on beta. So the derivative with respect to beta with a minus sign, right? This one, we have to consider that. And then integral minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus beta x squared dx. So if you're unclear of what this is, just mo multiply through and take the derivative with respect to beta again, right? You're going to get the x squared and the minus sign, and you will get exactly what we just had. So we simply rewrote this, but this is an incredibly important trick because this is the way that you solve this. Because now we transformed the previous integral into a Gaussian integral, and we know how to solve it. So how do we solve the Gaussian integral? Well, that's square root of pi over beta. And now we have to take this derivative. Okay, so this derivative is going to be, let's see, minus square root of pi. And then we take the derivative of the, the beta of beta to the minus one half, right? Just to make it super clear. Now, what is that derivative? So that's going to be minus square root of pi. Then we get a minus one half times minus one half. And then we get beta to the minus three half. So we get square root of pi over two beta to the minus three halves. Okay, so that is the result. Let's now plug it in here. So maybe I'm going to get rid of all of these things so we can just plug it in. Actually, maybe not just yet. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of exactly this. Okay, so let's plug it in. So we get so this is square root of pi 
over 2 times beta. But what is beta? Beta is 2b to the minus 3 halves. But we are also multiplying by 2b, right? So this will cancel out a part of the exponent. And we will be left with minus 1 half, which is simply 1 over the square root. So let's write it as such. So 1 over square root of 2b. Okay, so now what do we have inside of this bracket? So maybe let's factor out some of the things that we have in common. So we can factor out square root of pi over 2b, and then we have everything here. So h squared, b over m, and we also have a squared, which we can now write. So a squared is 2b over pi, right, with a square root. And then in here we have 1 minus 1 half. Um, so here we have a few things that cancel out. So this cancels out this. And well, that, that's it. <laughs> and then we have one half. Right? One minus one half, this is one half. So we get h bar squared times b over 2m, which is the same, of course, that we got in, in the last video. Okay. Um, so let's see what comes next. So now we need the potential. And the potential, of course, is minus alpha times the delta potential. So let's do that. <clears throat> so the expectation value of the potential is going to be integral minus infinity to infinity of a squared e to the minus 2bx squared and times the potential, which has a minus alpha and delta of x dx. And this is, of course, extremely easy. Delta function is zero everywhere except <coughs> exactly at, at that point which is at x equals zero. So this is simply, it. basically the delta kills the integral and we are left um, with the function evaluated at zero. But what is the function? The function is this exponential. If x equals zero, it is one. So we're left with minus alpha times a squared. That's it. And what is a, of course? Let's write it down. So a squared, it's going to be um, square root of 2b over, actually, I'm forgetting about it. Yeah, 2b over pi. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the entire expectation value for the Hamiltonian, which is, of course, our estimate for the ground state energy, this will be our previous value, which is h squared b over 2m minus alpha square root of 2b over pi. And this is our estimate. However, we want this to be as small as possible. So what we have to do, right, this is the core idea of the variational principle. We will now minimize this. So we will derive it with respect to our parameter B, right? That's the whole point why we had the parameter B in the first place. Um, and we want to set it equal to zero to find the minimum possible value. And well, what do we get? So let's see. So here, the b simply falls out, right? We are dividing with respect to b. It's gone. Then we have square root of 2 over pi. And the derivative of square root of b is going to be 1 half times b to the minus 1 half. So from here, we can now separate this to one side. So we get h bar squared over 2m. This is equal to alpha. And then we get 1 over square root of 2 pi, right? I combine this square root with this 2. And then we still have b to the 1 half down here. So if we want to solve for b, let's multiply through. So we get b to the 1 half is going to be alpha square root of 2. Uh, actually, I guess I could have simplified those two. It doesn't matter. Um, times 2m over h bar squared. And now I just square this whole thing. So b is going to be, let's see, 4 m squared alpha squared. And then we get 2 pi h bar to the fourth power. And we can simplify a little bit since this 4 cancels out with this right here. And we get a 2. Um, I think there's, yeah, it's fine. OK. And now. This is the value of B that minimizes our energy. Thus, to find the minimal energy, which will be our best guess for the ground state energy, we actually have to plug this into our previous result for the energy, which is right here. So let's do that. So the 
energy is going to be let's see h bar squared over 2m let's plug in b so we get 2m squared alpha squared pi h bar to the fourth power minus alpha square root of 2 over pi times the square root of this so we get square root of 2 over pi times m times alpha times h bar squared okay so let's see what can we simplify here um we can simplify some h bars the twos so we get m alpha squared pi h bar squared minus again m alpha squared then we have a two so minus two divided by pi h bar squared so here they're going to cancel out a little bit right and we'll have the energy for our bound state or the estimate for the ground state will be minus m alpha squared divided by pi h bar squared and we can see that this overestimates the actual ground state energy since the actual ground state energy is minus m alpha squared over 2 h bar squared and pi is of course larger than 2 right and consider that we're dealing with uh, negative numbers that's why okay um so that is how we use the variational principle to solve this problem so what we did and that's what actually always happens with the variation principle it's really really simple to use we have our hamiltonian we have our function we have to normalize the function which is what it did right here and then we found the expectation value of the hamiltonian in the with those wave functions right and the integrands were a bit annoying we had to use the gaussian integral which is, which is extremely important that you know and eventually we found the value for that expectation value then we minimized the parameter b right? we derived the energy with respect to b and we set it equal to zero found the value of b and plug it back in that is what we did that's what we, these problems are all about so i hope that this video was useful to you if it was please make sure to leave a like in the video comment if it was good um you know just to help with the algorithm and maybe share it to some of your friends who might need this as well so i'll see you in the next video thank you very much for watching